I found a Dharma video that the duration is just nice, around 16 minutes. And I thought, why not watch together? And I myself haven't watched this. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. The difference between wants and needs by venerable to 10 children. Somebody wrote in after a recent Sharing the Dharma Day <clears throat> and asked a question about the talk. And the talk uh, had to do with needs and wants. And this person said, I'm not too clear on the difference between them. So I thought I would talk a little bit about that. And the more I thought about it, um, the more some differences between the two became clearer and other differences became more murky. <laughs> okay, but we'll just plunge into it anyway. Okay, so needs we feel are what we need either to stay alive, to perform a certain project, to accomplish something, to become something. And wants seem to be what we desire. Okay, well, that sounds simple, they're different. But when we need certain things, then often the needs turn to wants because we begin to want more than we actually need. And also when we want certain things, then that determines what we need to accomplish what we want. Okay, are you getting what I mean? Okay, so like if you want a nice house, uh, okay, um, yeah, you want a nice house. Then to get a nice house, you need a job and you need a real estate agent and you need, uh, you know, all these other kinds of things in order to get a house. Yeah. So you have a want and that want sense needs. But then some people say, no, it's not that I want a house. I need a house. Yeah, shelter is one of our needs as biological critters. So I need a house. But do you need the kind of house that you want? <laughs> or would a simpler house work just as well and not cause so many problems for you. Mm. Okay. So we have to, to look at what we need and what we want to fulfill that need. You know, a need for housing, that's legit. What do we actually need to fulfill that? You know, not as much as we think we need, probably. Some of you don't look too happy. But, you know, think about it. Um, we need food, nourishment, but do we need everything we think we need to be nourished? And where do wants get mixed up in there too? Okay, so if we go through, you know, food, clothing, shelter, medicine, yeah, all four of those, you know, basic human stay alive needs. Yeah, that sounds fine. But often how we go about meeting those needs turn into rampant wants. Yeah, and then of course, the more we want and the more we desire, then the more we have to have put out energy to fulfill what we need to meet that want or the desire. And then we get all tangled up because if you want the house, you need a job to get the job, you need an education 
to get the education, then you need certain grades, which means after school you have to sit down and study, and it goes on and on and on. And then you say, oh, I have all these things I need to do. Okay. So that that's here's another offshoot of the need want thing is what we need to do. Okay. In other words, I have to do and what we choose to do. Because we think when we say I need to do this, it means I have to do it and that there is no choice involved. Okay, I need to go pick up my kids at school. Okay, I need more money, uh, you know, for the family. I need some recognition. I need some love. Okay, yeah, I need to get a better paying job. I need to do this. I need to do that. And then we tell ourselves we just have all these things pressing in on us that we have absolutely no choice about because we need to do them. Okay. Actually, most of the things we think we need to do, we don't have to do. Yeah. We can choose to do them or not. According to what we choose to do, we will experience different results. Okay, so you say, you might say, I need more money so that my child can go to summer camp. Okay, and I have to get a better job to get the money so my child can go to summer camp. Okay, are these these are based on wants, actually. The child doesn't need to go to, their life doesn't depend on going to summer camp. Yeah. Maybe your um, feeling of being a good parent depends on your child going to summer camp more than the child <laughs> going to summer camp is something the kid wants to do. Okay. But then when we say, I have to do this, we box ourselves into a life where we have no choice. And also when we say, I have to, yeah, it, it means that I'm not responsible for my choices because I have to do them. Okay. But many of the things we say I have to do, we don't have to do. I have to go to work. No, you don't have to. Every morning there is a decision. You can go to work or you cannot go to work. It's your decision. Nobody's sitting there with a gun to your head saying you have to go to work. Even if they were, you still have a choice whether to go or not go. Okay. But we get out of t bearing responsibilities for our choices by saying we need to do certain things. And it's actually, it would be better for us to say, I choose to do this rather than I need to. And then look at what we choose to do. And if we choose to do something we don't like, yeah, then don't complain about it because we chose to do it. And if you're doing something you don't like in order to get something you do like, still don't complain about it because you chose to do it. You don't need to get the thing that you think you want. You getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah? Okay. So I think it's much wiser in our life, our life to say, I choose to do this. And then we uh, happily accept uh, the results of our choices. Instead of feeling I have to do something, and then 
being resentful, disgruntled, and blaming other people because we're not happy. Okay, so in certain relationships, we say, I need to do this, or else the other person's going to be unhappy. No, we choose to do that. Okay, and if you choose to do something because it's going to bring a result that you want, then be happy about choosing to do it instead of being disgruntled. And if you really don't want to do the thing that you think you have to do to get the result you want, then give up the result that you want and just don't do the thing to get it and be content with what you have. Yeah. Actually, I think life can be much, e much easier than we make it. <laughs> We make our decisions so difficult for us. Because the thing is, I want this, but I don't want to have to do what I need to do to get it. I want it just to come. Yeah. And I don't want that, but I don't want to do what I have to do to not get that. I just want it to magically disappear. Okay. And that's not going to happen either. It's like we're so unrealistic when you think about it. So coming back to just wants and needs, that was needs and, and, and choices. Wants and needs. The person who wrote the question said, I realized from the talk that many of the thing that when I was married, many of the things I thought I needed from my husband actually were things I wanted from him. I thought that was an excellent observation. And I bet if she, I don't know if, if they're divorced or not, but it, let's say they are for the sake of my example. I bet that if she had realized that a lot of the things she thought were needs were actually wants, that the marriage would still exist. Because when we think we need this and the other person isn't giving it to us, yeah, then we're unhappy and we complain and we blame and thinking that that will get us what we want. The other person will change their mind and give us what we want. And as much as we're unhappy, as much as we blame, yeah, does that really happen? Does the other person change and give us what we want? No. They usually get mad at us and they become resentful. You're being demanding. No, I just need things from you. Well, no, that's a demand that you need. <sighs> you know, and then somebody comes along and says, do you really need that? Yes, I do. I'm going to fade away. You know, if my husband doesn't tell me he loves me every single day, or, if, you know, my wife doesn't do this and that and have you know, then I feel neglected, then I feel unwanted. Yeah, I need those things. No, you want them. You don't need them. You want them. And the thing is that a lot of the emotional things that we think we want, even when we get them, they don't satisfy us. Especially, I need to be appreciated. Okay. Does anybody have enough appreciation? No, none of us feel we're appreciated enough. Yeah, we could always use some more. So as much as we get, it is never enough. Even if we complain and blame and then the person relents and, okay, I'll tell you how wonderful you are every day. Still, <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be enough for us. In the same way that nobody has enough money, nobody has enough love. Okay. There are certain things that no matter how much we have, we do not have enough of. Because when our mind has attachment, we always want more and better, more and better, more and better, more and better. This is my theme song, more and better. How can I get it? <laughs> yeah, and then we're miserable. But when we hear, give up your wants, and your desires, then we go, oh, then I'll be really miserable. Oh, if I can't get what I want, I'll be truly miserable and unhappy. It's not getting what you want or not getting what you want that makes you happy or sad. It's the wanting, it's the craving to start with. Yeah. Because as soon as we have craving, yeah, if we don't fulfill our craving, we're unhappy. If we do fulfill our craving, we still don't have enough and we're unhappy. Okay. So it's very interesting to ask, take time and ask ourselves, what do I need and what do I want? And do I need to do certain things or am I choosing to do them? And I think our life becomes much happier um, when we take responsibility for discriminating between these things. Okay, that's the end of the clip. So we have a few minutes left. What do you guys think about it? Are they good? Good, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a really good reminder, and for me too, and it's nice to start the Monday with this reminder. <laughs> Unfortunately, later, I have to do work. No, 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 no. I chose to do work. <laughs> I'd like that, see, in the end, it concludes back to the noble truth that actually, it's all about our craving. It's not about getting what we want. It's not about not getting what we want, but it's about our desire, our craving that leads us to suffering. Yeah. This, that's my takeaway. How about you guys? Any of you would like to add? So we can choose not to suffer. Yeah, isn't it? so nice <laughs> there is a choice right so as we learn more and more about the truth then we will somehow somehow slowly bit by bit um, don't have too many ones if you have so many ones then you have to have a lot of need to fulfill your one yes so I, should, I would say um, that means every moment, just keep looking at yourself. What what exactly do you want and you don't want? Yeah. That's why it's all about cultivation. Yeah. I enjoy the talk a lot. Thank you. Okay, thanks, I guess. Okay, how about others? Sister Singhui, maybe. Um, like you have mentioned, it's a very good reminder. I, I like the way that she guides us to think, um, to differentiate the needs and wants and making a choice, you know, having to make a choice rather than thinking that they have no choice. So we have to take the responsibility and also being um, realistic by what she has mentioned. Yeah, about what, what uh, is, yeah, to be realistic. Uh, that, that, that I thought is very good. Uh, thank you for sharing. Okay, thanks, sister. Yeah, it's been some time since I listened to Phenomenal to Ten Children too, and it's always a joy to listen to. <laughs> okay, anyone else? If not, let's do a dedication. 
，厌消三障就烦恼，厌怠就可以证明了，普愿这一障细消除，是是常行菩萨道，阿弥陀佛。Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Have a needy Monday ahead. <laughs> okay. We all have to work today. Oh, no, no, no. We choose to work today. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I'll see you guys again next.